Today, we're gonna tackle advice for some, from some of the top financial experts out there, specifically around getting out of debt. You're gonna see whether I agree with them or disagree, and hopefully you're gonna take away some practical tips for yourself. Even if you're not struggling with debt today, let's make sure that you become wealthier and that you're constantly adding to your net worth. So number one, you know, I'm going to talk about Dave Ramsey. He says, use the snowball method. So he says that listing your debts from smallest to largest and paying them off in that order. This strategy known as the debt snowball method allows you to gain momentum as you knock out each debt one by one. Okay, I actually like the snowball method because I believe when you're making money moves, you need momentum. Money likes speed, money likes momentum. And so if you could go and knock out, you know, a thousand dollar credit card that you have and you feel a little wind beneath your cell, you're feeling a little bit more confident about your wealth growing game, you're more likely to move on to the second you know, area of debt that you need to tackle. So I actually, you know, I'm going to say good job, Dave Ramsey on coming out with the snowball method. Uh, I like it. Next one. We got Suze Orman. <laughs> Suze says negotiate lower interest rates. She encourages people to call their credit card companies to negotiate lower rates. And this helps you get significant savings and help you pay off your debt faster. You know what? I have to again, I have to agree with Suze here too. I don't even know if that's how you say her name. I like this advice as well. I try to tell people all the time, there's always a deal to be made when you have cash. So let's say you do owe $10,000 on a credit card and you happen to have $8,000, you know, available to invest, you know, in getting debt free. I would call, you have negotiating power at that point to call your credit card company and say, hey, I can pay you $8,000 today. And if you could just, you know, let go of, you know, the five years of interest that you've been holding over my head and wipe this slate clean. You have a little bit more negotiating power in that way. Um, so know what you have to bring to the table, I would say. Don't just call and be like, hey, will you give me a lower interest rate because I'm going through a hardship? People don't care. What do you think? Credit card companies, consumer debt is a huge business. They thrive when you're going through a hard time. So they're not going to let you off the hook because you're going through a hard time. What do you bring to the table? How quickly can you pay off your debt? How much cash can you give them? You know, and how quick can you get it to them? So come with that and then you can negotiate some type of deal. Robert Kiyosaki says, increase your financial education. You guys know I love Kiyosaki, okay? He's the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and he says that if you increase your financial IQ, you will get out of debt because you'll understand how money works and how to make it work for you. And this is probably why I will stand and die on the hill that we don't need to focus on getting out of debt. We don't need to sit here and think all of our resources and our pure imagination on going, how do I get out of debt today? No, you should put all of your pure imagination to going, how can I make more money today? Which means how many more people can I help today with the gifts, experience, and knowledge that I have? That needs to be the question that we're asking ourselves. You need to get creative. You need to get resourceful because let's say you're a million dollars in debt. There might be somebody watching this right now that is a million dollars in debt. And when you say it like that, it's like $1 million. Like it's so much money. But if you just go, well, how do I make an extra million dollars in the next six months? Your brain loves to be smart. Your brain loves to have the answer. So just ask a question like that and go, hmm, well, I could sell a course online. Well, I could, you know, take a HELOC out. Don't do that. Uh, you know, it, it's gonna go, come up with all of these options for you. And then once you pick an option that suits your lifestyle the best, you go and use part of my coaching method over here, okay? and go, okay, I need to heal myself because part of the reason I'm a million dollars in debt is because there's a rooted issue that I need to get to. So I'm gonna heal myself so I don't find myself in the same position again. And then I'm gonna take the next best step. 
and you could do these simultaneously. So you could be nurturing your inner child and taking a really positive step towards putting an offer out there on social media and helping more people while you're at it. So of course, I freaking love this advice from good old Kiyosaki. David Bach says, pay yourself first. He's the author of Automatic Millionaire. He says, set up automatic transfers to your savings account each time you get paid. This helps ensure you're saving money consistently and not just using what's left over after paying your bills. You know, I've never heard of this guy before and I follow this method. So I absolutely love this advice. I had no, you guys, I hadn't read the advice before I'm doing this live because yeah, I want you to get my pure reaction. I am obsessed with this because most people pay everybody else first, right? We pay our rent first, we pay our cars next, we pay for our groceries. We do all of these things without going, okay, how am I going to get ahead? And if you were making $5,000 a month and you took, even if you just took 5% off the top of that, okay? What is that? Is that uh, 500 bucks? 500 bucks. And you, I'm gonna put it in savings, okay? What are you gonna have by the end of the year? You're gonna have $6,000 in savings, which might go, oh, that's not a lot, but hey, $6,000, you could buy a real estate coaching course, you could buy a coaching certification course, you can do a lot with that money to invest back into you so you can be more valuable in the marketplace. So I absolutely love this advice. And I just wanna add in that when you pay yourself, I think you should also pay God first. So I always give back to those that spiritually advise me and are helping me spiritually. So that could be a church, that could be a charity that I'm giving to, that could also be a mentor or a pastor that sows time into me and prays with me. I give back to them automatically as well. They don't have it automatically, I, I take that back. As soon as I get paid for like my big, big, big kahuna clients, I will take the first fruits of what I know I'm gonna make that entire month. And I actually then go and sow the seed wherever it's going because I used to do it automatically. And then I felt like I forgot how much I was giving to all these people, you know, and I was giving this to God. And so now I actually do it by hand and I say, okay, God, I want all of these seeds that you've given me to be multiplied. I'm giving it to this church. I'm giving it to this cause, but God multiply it. And so I say a prayer over it. I think that's really important to when we're being intentional with money to like give it to God at the same time and pray blessings over it. Number five, Jean Chotsky. I like Jean Chotsky. I don't even know if it's a male or a female, but I feel like it's a she. I'm going to say she. Hopefully this isn't bad. But they say make more money. Find ways to increase your income. This could involve asking for a raise. But even if you ask for a raise, you're asking for pennies. So that's probably not the best thing. Find a higher paying job. Okay. Yes. And studies show that most people are cutting themselves short by staying loyal to employers when you need to stay loyal to you. And if you switch companies on you know, a two to three year basis, you're gonna continue to get the higher paying jobs. So just wanted to throw that out there. At what point does loyalty become slavery? You need to do what's best for you and your legacy that you're creating, okay? And I say this, I have employees, but I still, I mean, you know, they're loyal sometimes to a fault. I feel like you gotta constantly be asking them to level up so they can make more money. And if they don't, then they're not going to get paid anymore, right? The next way you could start a side hustle, that's what I did when I was 23 years old. There are so many side hustles right now. Go and use your car to DoorDash, Uber Eats. Go and learn the skill of graphic design and put up your uh, projects that you're available for on Fiverr or Upwork. There is always a way to make some extra money, okay? Especially when you're just in the beginning and you're not quite sure what you wanna do to strike it big. Try a lot of different things. Don't just say, this is the only way I make money. It's the only way I know how to. No, look in the mirror and figure out what it is that you're good at and go to work, put yourself out there, tell people that you're available, that you could help them achieve their goals. Now, the last one is Gail Vazoxlide. She says, use cash instead of credit. She's a Canadian financial writer, and she says, use cash to help curb spending. She believes it's hard to part with physical cash, cash 
which can help you think twice before making unnecessary purchases. I get where she's going with this. I do. I do get the understanding of, I mean, anytime I have cash, I'm like, ooh, how much of a tip do I want to give? You know, like I think more about it rather than when it's on Venmo, I'm like $50. You know, it's easier. So I get that mindset, but we can't negate the fact that there are so many benefits to using a credit card. But if you are somebody that has a shopping addiction, cut your credit cards up right now. You got to build up some discipline before you get those credit cards. But if you're somebody that you're like, Kayla, I'm disciplined. And, you know, sometimes I uh, need to, you know, you know, buy things where with money that I don't necessarily have yet. Um, I would say that's still a dangerous mindset, but if you're somebody like me that I use credit cards for everything, I use a credit card for everything. You want to know why? Because I want to get the points. The only time I will not use a credit card is if it doesn't make sense for the fees and it's easier for me to just use a bank wire because I'll actually save money that way. Um, you know what I mean? So if I go and look at the fees, I'm like, am I going to make it up for it with the points? Am I going to get triple points here? I'm very strategic about my points <laughs> or else I'll just use a wire from the bank account if the credit card processing fees are going to outweigh the points I'm going to get from that purchase. Okay. If it's like a very large pers- purchase. So go and check out your credit cards. There's, I'm not the credit card guru. I don't know which one is the best credit card out there. But in the show notes, I'll have an affiliate link to my Amex Platinum because that is the one you have to pay for it. But there are a lot of perks. I mean, Chase and I have bought a whole vehicle using our Amex Platinum charge card. What I like about that is that if you do not pay off that card by the end of the month, they will shut you off. Like, bye bye. You ain't going to use it anymore. You know, so I like that compared to other credit cards. Maybe you missed your minimum payment. You forgot. They're just going to add more fees to your credit card and they're going to keep letting you swipe 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 so i like the amex because it has that in place like you've got to pay the entire thing off not even a minimum payment you got to pay that entire thing off so i'm a fan of the amex platinum plus um, anytime we travel we always get free upgrades and we always get early check-in and late checkout there are a lot of bonuses so if you're a traveler definitely use your card to get all these points all right um, I would say for me, I'll, if I don't have any travel coming up, I also love being able to use like the cash back option on my Chase Business Inc. card. Like I'll save thousands and thousands of dollars just by, I mean, I'll even use my groceries, you know, with my credit card. And it's like, boom, boom, boom. I love the points. Obviously, I can get extremely passionate about it. Maybe I need to do a whole course on points. Or maybe I just gave one of you guys the idea to do a course (laughs) on which credit card is the best option for you, okay? Basically, I like everybody's I like everybody's advice here. You need to figure out which advice is gonna work best for you. If you're somebody who the debt is swallowing you whole and you feel like you can't even breathe because it's so heavy then you should create a debt consolidation plan and you should probably work with a counselor that can help you break it down. There are a lot of debt consolidation companies out there that will literally work with you in tandem to help you pay that down. Um, If it's that big of a worry on your shoulders, absolutely work with a company like that. If you're somebody like me, I'm just like, I leverage debt as much as I can (laughs) because I realize that that's what the wealthiest people in the world do, then it doesn't really bother me that much. I'm just like, hey, I know what my job, it's biblical to be the lender and not the borrower. And I'm putting money out on a daily basis, lending it to people. And I charge money to loan that to people, right? So I understand that debt sometimes works out um, in your favor. It can get you through a hard time. It might sometimes be the only way that you could survive during that season. And then when you're out of that season, that desperation season, get into resourcefulness and start going, I am a co-creator with God. I am made in the image of God. God has constantly given me downloads to where I have amazing business ideas, amazing business acumen, and I can make as much money as I imagine. So if you're a million dollars in debt, it just means, okay, I'm going to find a million ways to make money to get out of debt this year. And you're all of a sudden 
you know, maybe you go viral on YouTube and you start making a ton of money just by people watching you. You never know how it's going to happen, but be open to the possibilities and know that everything's always happening for you. And that shame that can come with the debt, don't let that carry you anymore. Just rebuke that in the name of Jesus, get rid of it and start focusing on your future because it is so bright.